The fable respecting Phaeton, however, requires a manifold discussion. For in the first place, it is necessary to consider it historically, in the second place, physically, and in the third place, philosophically. History, therefore, says that Phaeton was the offspring of the sun and of Clymene, the daughter of Ocean, and that, driving the chariot of his father, he deviated from the proper track. That Jupiter also, fearing for the safety of the universe, destroyed him by a thunderbolt. But he, being blasted by thunder, fell about Eridanus, the river. The fire, likewise, proceeding from him, burnt everything that was nourished by the earth. And his sisters, the Heliades, lamented his fall. And such is the historical account of the fable. It is, however, necessary to admit that a conflagration took place. For the whole narration is introduced for the sake of this, and also that the cause of it is neither an impossibility nor a certain thing which may easily happen. But it will be impossible if one fancies that the sun at one time drives his own chariot and at another time being changed ceases to drive it and commits his proper employment to another. But it will be among the number of things which may be easily accomplished if it is supposed that this Phaeton was a comet, which, being dissolved, produced an intolerable dryness from vehement heat, for this supposition is generally adopted. Porphyry, therefore, says that certain signs may be assumed from the motion of comets. So what he's referring to there is very interesting because we're getting a little peek into a tradition that actually existed in the post-Platonic world, the belief that Phaeton did represent, in fact, a comet. And as it says, a conflagration, as Plato said, a conflagration of things upon the earth happening after long intervals of time. And so we're introduced to these ideas right at the outset of the story of Atlantis, and therefore I don't think we can even proceed to uh, mm -hmm. hope to have any understanding of the narrative that follows without taking in con to, into consideration this prefatory material and these prefatory references to... Right. Um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so basically since, uh, since the old priest in Solon's account referenced the story, we looked into that. And uh, and so looking into Phaeton, and then you're now you're pointing out that that it's clear to some people, to some scholars, and even ancient people that Fa the the legend of Phaeton was about a cometary. Yeah, uh, the idea that yes, that 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 this belief existed back in the okay. classical world, that this myth referred to a comet, and and you know Plato's pretty explicit about that when he says, well, it has the appearance of a myth, but it really represents the declination of the bodies revolving in the heavens about the Earth. Right. And a, and a conflagration of things after a long interval of time. So it almost seems to be implying there that it's, a, that it's a regular occurrence, perhaps a cyclical occurrence. Yeah. See? So I think this is, this is crucial to, to going further with this idea of Atlantis. And I think it's really interesting and important that this, this particular perspective is introduced right at the beginning of the narrative. Given what we now know about um, things that might have happened back during that interval, because as we also saw uh, in the last episode, was that um, the dating of Atlantis and the war between the Proto-Athenians and the Atlanteans took place uh, about 9,000 years before Solon's trip to Egypt, where he uh, first received the tale from the elderly Egyptian priests. So given that particular date, which is repeated three times throughout the narratives, we can uh, conclude that we're looking at around 11,600 years ago. 